Welcome back to another episode of How Far Can I Get Without Dying? And this time I'm going to be playing Ninja Gaiden 3. Um, if you watch the videos for Ninja Gaiden 1 and 2, I got to some point in the second act in each of those before I died. Both times I got knocked back into a pit. So let's see if I can break that record and get a little further in this game. Maybe I can get to Act 3. No, let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, I could get killed two minutes into the game. We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, Jacquio and Ashtar are both gone in Ninja Gaiden 3. There's this new villain. I think his name's Clancy or something like that. He's not as cool as those guys were. Um, and Irene is acting very weird. I think she throws herself off a cliff. Or she falls. Oh, she falls. That's what it is. And uh, there's this weird fortress that's creating biomechanical warriors. Yes, Ninja Gaiden 3 is much creepier than the first two. It, it kind of moves away from the supernatural and towards the uh, science run amok, if you will. It's a very cool game, though. Unlike the first two, this one does not have unlimited continues. However, I find that it's an easier game overall than the first two. Like, considerably easier. The problem is you don't have those continues. So th the first two could be incredibly hard, but you could eventually get through them if you just kept trying, because you had infinite continues. Ninja Gaiden 3, however, no such luck. You run out of continues, go back to the beginning of the game. So even though the game is easier, in all honesty, at the end of the day, it's probably harder. Unless you use save states, then it's, you know, definitely easier than the first two. But if you don't use states, if you just play it normally, yeah, it, it could probably take a lot longer to get through than the first two. A lot more tries, a lot more time. Your mileage may vary. In any case, I personally would say it's the easiest of the three. Once you get good at it and you can just power through it and you don't need your continues, it's the easiest. But most players, yeah. Most players are going to want those continues. Because no one wants to just play the same few levels of a game over and over and over again. Alright, here we go. Act 1. I'm not really a fan of the look of this game. It has kind of a, a power blade look to it. Where everything is mechanical. And I just, I don't know, I don't really like it. There's robots everywhere. I just, I prefer the kind of... Uh, cityscape look of the first two. Okay, so a couple changes right off the bat. You can cling to ceilings in this game. You could not do that in the first two. Ooh, and you have a, a sword upgrade. That's awesome. A much needed sword upgrade. I forgot about the sword upgrade. I would actually rank this game uh, below the, the first two in terms of difficulty just because of the sword upgrade. Sword upgrade makes everything easier. I'm actually uh, taking a lot more punishment on the first stage, though, than I did with the other two games. Ooh, and you can climb over the top of the wall that you're on without having to hop to a nearby wall. That is very cool. Another much-needed change right there. Oof. Man, this, this super sword power-up, I believe that's what it's called, is awesome. It's so needed in these games. Oh shit, I'm, I'm like getting killed here. Okay, here's the boss. There we go. Oh. Hold on, I have to see what he does. He might have a dash attack of some sort. Go up here, I can just blast him. Oh, I'm out of power up. Oh, he's easy to uh, anticipate, as it turns out. So three, three uh, fireballs, and then you attack. 
right now, I think it's time to jump over him. Uh, this has to be the easiest first boss in any of the three Ninja Gaidens. Oh shit. Hmm. The timer is going to become my enemy very soon. Cut it real close here. Yeah, forget what I said about him being the easiest first boss. He's actually uh, fairly challenging. Even if he's very repetitive. Alright, I'm gonna wait. Boom, got him. Whatever those weird embryo things are in the background, they are incredibly creepy. All right, so we've cleared Act 1. We're off to a good start here. That was a longer Act 1 than the first two games. It had, like, multiple parts. And I think this is the villain of the game. I want you to do something for me. It's not a sexual favor, is it? Because I don't think Ryu's going to go for that. Go to the Castle Rock Fortress. Get past all the traps. Well, yeah, of course. Of course there are traps and enemies. So why should I go to Castle Rock Fortress and go through a bunch of traps? Why would I do any of this? Give me a, a reason here. I don't have time to give you the detail. Okay, well then screw you, pal. You go get through the... Oh, Irene. Irene, you say. I need info on Irene. I need to know why she uh, fell off that cliff. Okay, so now we're in the desert. This game has some really cool settings, and the visuals are a lot nicer than the first two games. Whoa! That was creepy. It's kind of weird mud man. Oh, man. Oh, I'm just getting blasted here. Damn it. Yeah, I think this might be the end. Taking too much damage. Whoa, there's too, too many enemies on screen at once here. Alright, I guess this is the end of the line, guys. I fought well. I had a good run. And I'm out of power-up. Well, it was a good run, guys. Another uh, another fun how far can I get without dying. I like doing these for uh, NES games. NES games are really cool in, in bite-sized chunks. Maybe I'll do, uh, I don't know, Mario or Castlevania or something. Problem is, I'm not that good at a lot of these old NES games, so you're only going to end up seeing the first, you know, world or whatnot. All right, well, I'll see you guys uh, next time or whatever, whatever I do next.